Thank you. Okay, it's working. Um, yes, um, I'm involved uh, since many years in, in uh, the ACFEST, uh, mostly with uh, the CTF team. I'm currently working at uh, Expo as a NAPSEC lead. Uh, I'm doing AppSec for more than 12 years and I started doing code reviews, pen tests, and uh, more recently I'm more into uh, integrated security activities and development process. Uh, I've done, uh, I also did uh, a lecture at the Laval University for a web application security course. Um, and I don't like scriptedies, especially in CF, for those who have made the, uh, uh, I've tried my challenge in, in the past years. Uh, I make, uh, I spend effort so they can uh, use tooling and be, you can be uh, using, yeah, to make their life more difficult. Um, so the shift left, my, uh, the shift, shift left keywords are, uh, almost on every organization mine currently. And when you think of shift left with uh, AppSec, what you think of? You think of plenty of security tools, a lot of tools and there's, there's others and that haven't listed here. Uh, but when it comes to implementing those tools in your pipeline and your CSCD, um, it's kind of, uh, a game of pointing each other team in your organization. So the security team says, okay, it's development. I don't know what CICD is about. I don't know how to code. So they say it's up to the developers to, to do it. But the developer says it's up to the security guys to do it because it's security. And, and then in, the, in between, there's the AppSec folks that, that try to, to put things, things together and, and and say to the both of the developers and security team, uh, don't leave me alone. I, I need both of you to uh, to be able to integrate the security activities in, in the uh, pipelines. Uh, so, but bottom line, um, when it comes to integrated those activities, um, and the find for developers is very the, the easy part when you do uh, start implementing those activities, you, you will soon face many challenges, uh, such as how to keep the, the right scanning coverage uh, with your tool, how do you address the, the vulnerabilities in a timely manner. And to, to address those challenges, organizations tend to um, do standard, what I could, uh, what I will um, categorize as standard activities, is to train developers, it's to deploy uh, AppSec champion, create security stories, create condition I've done. So all those stuff that is done like a, a classical uh, standard way in the CIC, uh, in the S, uh, software, secure software development life cycle. Uh, those are all good things to do. But to me, there's, there's more that we can do uh, to, help, uh, to help implementing uh, those security activities. And especially, uh, there are more that can be done outside of the normal scope of a security development life cycle. Um, so today, I, I want to, to share with you some challenges that I've seen uh, over the years uh, while uh, implementing security activities uh, with various size organization uh, when I was doing consultant, uh, when I was consul doing consulting as consultant. And more lately, uh, which I faced uh, as a, uh, at Expo, uh, and challenges that you might be facing as well. Um, the, all those challenges uh, we face, it's not because we're, we're not good <laughs> at, um, at, in, at security or implementing those, it's just because it's difficult for everyone. So it's not, you're, you're not alone. And I, I want to share thoughts and experience on how to, to, to overcome those, uh, those challenges. So uh, in this presentation, we'll, uh, we'll see three, uh, three main topics. Um, the first one is the, the prerequisite. So what could you do before even starting implementing security activities in your, uh, your pipeline and your development to 
uh, to reduce uh, the burden of, of the security activity. Uh, and then the dependency, so what are the, the, the other activity or practices that you need to, uh, to do in parallel and evolve while, um, while implementing security activity? And then to make all that happen for both maintaining the, uh, the prerequisite and the dependencies, how you can enable uh, and enable that. Um, for the purpose of the presentation, we'll base our, uh, I'll base the presentation on a standard, somehow, somehow standard uh, solution for nowadays. Uh, so there's, it's a container-based uh, development with, in which, uh, solution development with, in which you have two development teams working on two different web applications for delivering the business logic. And in between, there's the shared component maintained by the best effort team, which we don't necessarily who is in the, uh, the company or in the organization. And on top of that, all those teams uses different technologies and different languages, different frameworks. So it's, uh, it, it, it's getting complicated uh, by, by every minute. And, and, those tech, and all those development teams, uh, if you, you have to deal with, with developers on a daily basis, uh, all developers team have a good reason to use their technology rather than the other developers technology. So there's, 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 we, we have a few challenges to overcome here. Um, so we, we'll start to see what, uh, what we could be do, doing before, even before starting implementing security uh, in, in your uh, security activities in your pipeline. Um, when the organization, uh, organization try, uh, start to, tr to look into uh, integrating uh, the shift left in, in their CI/CD pipeline in, in their security activities, they tend to oh, we'll start with uh, uh, static code analysis and software composition analysis. And, and, and to me, that, that's a good path. And if I have the, the choice to, to propose uh, when to propose a, a way to start over for me the, the software composition analysis. It's a good starting point when you, you start and, and it's, a, it's a good way to, to do it. Why software composition analysis? Because somehow it's, it's easier to identify varieties that are uh, publicly poli uh, published and to remediate them because often you, you have the fix available. So, but but that, that's a good strategy either for software composition analysis or, or security testing. So you, you have your plan in mind and you contact your, your favorite vendor and they say, oh, I have the right tool for you and it will do everything you need to do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not sure, not quite sure that, 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 that this uh, will be. Uh, it, so even though the, 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 the vendor says to you, uh, it, it will do everything, you start, uh, you, you start getting back and forth between the dev and the AppSec team and you have questions. And basically the developer wants to, to do their work fast. They don't want to uh, bother to, uh, they, they want to bother with, with C with too much effort in, into security and, and they want to, to be efficient and don't spend time on things they, they don't think it's worth it. And on the other side, you have your, your AppSec uh, professional, which uh, will the hack uh, act as a gatekeepers to ensure that developers do uh, their, their work. Um, from, from a developer standpoint, uh, this, this this kind of makes sense because they don't have, they don't, they do not only have to uh, to address the security, but they have to do testing, they have to correct bugs, they have to deliver f features. So, so it's normal for them to uh, not be that willing to uh, to support security activities, and so therefore you, you need to have a way to reduce the gaps between uh, what upset, uh, what uh, developers do and what uh, AppSec is requesting. Um, so let's take a, 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 a bit a deeper look on, on the solution we have. And we can, we, we realize that there's 
uh, there's so many technologies out there and there's in, in, just in terms of containers, there's so many versions of, of, of Linux. So uh, is it easy f to manage uh, third-party vulnerabilities with uh, for functionalities in, in that situation? To me, no, because Debian has a way to manage their vulnerabilities, which is different than Oracle, and even for Debian 11 and 10, there are differences because the one is the current stable version and the, the other is the old stable version and, and they don't correct vulnerabilities at the same pace and not the same vulnerabilities. So, so, so it's, it's hard. And even from a security um, uh, static code analysis uh, point of view, do you have two teams using two different languages, two different frameworks? Uh, so is it, again, easy to in the identify and manage all the vulnerabilities, given that they are using the same different technologies. Uh, for me also, it's, uh, it, it, it's uh, I find it difficult when this situation arises. So you have to, to two basic approach to, to handle it. Either you manage some way to, in somehow to have enough uh, bandwidth and, and um, Team in, in team effort from, from a Mac tech perspective to support all those technologies, all those frameworks, and, and be able to uh, to support your development team with, with all those uh, specific challenges, or either you you want to try to inform teams on, on the developer side to use less uh, less technologies and reduce your uh, your, your your footprint. Uh, to me, the choice is is obvious. So. For me, it's it's better to uh, to reduce the um, the technological footprint. Uh, I, I'm not stating that's that's easy to do. Uh, no, it's not easy because humans are being humans, and they don't want to to change the way they, they work. But if you you're successful at uh, at uh, at reducing your your uh, footprint, uh, technological footprint, uh, you can make a great uh, great gain. And, and, um, and in that sense, um, for developers, they already, in, in your development team, there's already, there, sh there should be, or there, there is, uh, in most organizations, a team already dedicated to uniform practices and how they do work. So you can leverage that existing team to, uh, to, uh, to push that uniform, that standardization, uh, uniformization, that standardization, uh, so uh, it becomes easier from a security um, perspective, and, and that's not something that is I've seen often in in the, that kind of team to to think that that the decision they made can have an impact uh, on security. So now let's let's say that that. We've managed to to have the team uses uh, using the, the same technology, uh, so yeah, that's better. Uh, you will be able to to respond for faster to your development inquiry, uh, development team inquiries because uh, you don't have to to re to redo all the work every time. Um, but even though they they are using the same technologies. Um, it's not, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're out of trouble, okay? Um, whoever hired a developer saying that he cannot understand what the other developer did. It, it happens quite a lot. So it's not because the teams uses the same technologies and the same frameworks that they can understand each other's work, okay? and. From a security tooling perspective, what does it mean? Do you think that uh, it would be easy to, if two humans cannot understand each other, uh, would uh, an AI based, for instance, tool would be, would, would find it easy to understand both team code? Not necessarily. A and there are challenges related to that. A and situations like this can happen. Um, so their 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 teams are using the same security tools. They are using the same technologies. They're running the, the the tools on their project, 
and in one case they have no vulnerabilities and in the other case they have vulnerabilities. Those situation happens. Uh, you might have seen it uh, if you, you're working with uh, the D2 integration, you might have seen it. Uh, it's not that often, but when it, when it happens, you need to, to be able to, to cal tackle it. And somehow, when that happens, um, development team with no vulnerabilities don't tend to communicate with the AppSec and say, hey, I don't have any vulnerabilities for a few months. Okay. It's not normal that, that you, do, you do not come up with, with vulnerabilities for, for a few months, but uh, so, so you, you, you need to, um, <laughs> you need to, to be able, uh, able to handle this. So tools configuration problem happens, it happens to all organization, and in a, in, in something you can do to overcome uh, the, those issues is, is to ensure that even though the teams are using the same technology, you, they have to be using it on the same way. So the tool that you're develop, uh, deploying in your pipeline will it will be easier to uh, to, to configure. Uh, you won't have uh, and if there are issue with the con tool configuration, you will be uh, it will be easier to pick up because everyone doing the same thing, and then it's it's easier to uh, to notice uh, something that that went 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 wrong. Uh, rather than having only one team, one small team uh, on this one side of the business that is using uh, a technology, uh, on a technology on a, a specific matter, and, and you don't, you don't even, you didn't even know that they were doing that this this way, uh, so that that could help you to to support once again uh, to support your your development team. Um, so so with that. Uh, comes our, our first uh, prerequisite is basically to share uh, common practices in, in development to make sure that your development teams work the same way uh, one on another and and with that uh, you will reduce the uh, the amount of work you, you need to do while deploying tools you will be able to respond faster to, to inquiries uh, because you, you know how it's done and you will be able also to, to detect uh, easier, uh, more easily to detect uh, improper tool configuration. So with the assumption, uh, we, uh, uh, we had the assumption of the same coding uh, practice among your, your development team. Uh, you, you continue your, your journey in, in, app line, uh, in, in, the, in shift left and you can, you, you you think that you're all good to go now. No, uh, so you're, you think you're, you're all good to know and, and you want to start working on, on the vulnerabilities uh, that you found. So you, you ask your, your development team to, to report on, on the vulnerabilities on the tool they run on their, on their code and to, and, and to report on whichever secret activities they done. And for some other reason, even though the teams are using the same tools, uh, they manage to provide you the report on different format. And you have to, uh, and, and you have to sort it all out to, from, to extract from those reports, uh, command vulnerabilities, command issue, and, and be able to, to to understand how, w how they are working, what they are doing, and, and whether or not you should be uh, correcting things on, on, your, on your side from a, a security testing perspective. So to what should be done to, to add on that? Would, would it be to the AppSec team to sort it all out to make sure that uh, the, the report provided by the development teams are, uh, are transformed in, in a standard matter? Or would it be for the development team to make sure that they all provide the, 
the reports at, at the first hand in, in the same format. Uh, to me, once again, the, the choice is, is, is obvious, is that the development team should be uh, providing a uh, the, the, the information and the reports in a standard format. And with the, the shift left mindset, they should already be doing reporting on other activities than or just security. So if they come, come with to you and say, no, I don't have time to, to report on, on security, you, you can go back there to them and say, no, you have to, to report on things like testing, you on the bar, on the bug corrected, on the quality uh, qual code, st code quality standard uh, that you've passed. So they do need to report on, on a lot of things other than security, and why not uh, just bring the security uh, in, in that reporting. And how to produce that report, uh, one way to, to achieve that report is with uh, what's called the, the software bill of material. Uh, this is a picture from the NIST uh, guidance about software bill of material. So with uh, those kind of format, you can integrate all your information about your release, including the, the tooling you used for your scanning, the vulnerabilities found, uh, the release notes, you, you have plenty of information you can include in, in a standard way. So you can understand easily what, being do, uh, what the team w uh, have been doing and whether or not uh, they, they, they have been, been doing it properly. So with, with that information in the standard matter, uh, you, you can start uh, implementing, think about implementing gating but when you think about implementing gating uh, on, on your solution from a security standpoint, um, it's n it, it, it might not go as well a, a, as you think, and situation like this uh, can happen, is you, you have uh, for, for your solution, there's uh, three things, as we saw uh, at the beginning. You have two things which uh, the, the gate passes, and the, the other uh, the, the other team failed the gate. So, what you do, and especially when something like this uh, this uh, vulnerability a lot for shell, you, uh, you, uh, may, uh, I'm sure many of you have encountered uh, la on last December happens, and and it's happening in a component managed by uh, the best effort team. So it, it happens because there were poor patch management of that component because there was no one uh, assigned to, to maintain that code and, and make sure that things were running smoothly. So to address that variety, uh, mo in most cases, what team or organization did is they unstaff other development team to work on the patching of those, that component which was not well supported. And by unstaffing other teams, they reduces the amount of effort, uh, the amount of, of bandwidth of those development team. And then they have to reorganize their, their backlog. And then the scrum master say, oh, no, I don't have any effort left to work on security. So by correcting your vulnerability because you had poor management, patch management on your shared component, you end up being less secure on your two other uh, development. So, so there, there's a lot of impact on how you, 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 you manage your, uh, your patch and your release. So to avoid that kind of situation, uh, you, uh, You, one thing you can do is to man, make sure that you, you maintain a good patch management of your third party component. And a good patch management of your third party component, uh, in the end, you sh you sh it should reduce the, the need for uh, the software and composition analysis scan because if you're up to date, uh, you're constantly up to date with your third parties. Uh, then you, 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 you should be uh, you should be 
good. And also it, it reduces the cases where you get, um, where the development teams answer you, oh, to correct that vulnerability in, in that package, I need 200 mandates because, oh, why, and you, you ask why? Because I, I, I'm using a too old version and, I, and to correct that vulnerability, I need to upgrade six major version. Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> six major version, you, you might think that's, uh, that's not happening, six major version, but I can assure you this, it does, okay? So the, 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 the situation where, where development team are so behind that, um, they are so behind that it will have a, a great impact to, to address uh, vulnerabilities. And on the same matter, to inch, you need to have a good release process so one team can work on their, on their new version uh, and they can release their, their, their new version and without impacting other teams and to uh, other teams work. So we, you, you can continue releasing new version uh, of your two web apps that, w that we're seeing even though that the, 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 the center one uh, is not released or uh, on the converse, you, you have to be able to release a latest version uh, of your shared components uh, without impacting the, the, the two web apps that are uh, depending on that. So you, you need to have uh, a good, also a good, rele uh, good releases practice. So here comes our second prerequisite. So it's to have, uh, to share uh, patching and releases practices uh, among your your development team. So uh, we've seen that we've seen two prerequisites today. Uh, there are others that we could we could have explored, but uh, like for like the testing practices. But one thing, one important thing to to remember is that your ability to deploy security activities in in your pipeline on the, in your CI CD is not only security related, it's related to how development team works and how they, their processes, uh, processes works and how they do stuff. So uh, with that in mind, you can, uh, you can start, uh, you, st you can start thinking about security ahead. Um, so we manage to have shared practices which would reduce the, the burden of, of identifying or handling vulnerabilities. And now that things are much smoother uh, from, from that point of view, uh, you want to do really proper vulnerability management of what you have found in, uh, while using your tool. Um, but once again, there's back and forth between developers and, and, and AppSec. And basically what developers are saying is they, they are complaining that they have too many things to manage in, in order to, to, uh, to be able to do the, the vulnerability management. And because once again, human being human and they want to reduce their amount of work. They usually flag vulnerabilities as false positive. Uh, they, they, they flag them as not applicable and they, they, they are arguing that uh, they are not exploitable. And on top of that, uh, they want to, to, for some vulnerabilities, dismiss them without you noticing that uh, they, they, they dismiss vulnerability. And on the counterpart, uh, the AppSec team says, I don't, I don't have enough bandwidth to, uh, to support all team, to track all the vulnerabilities, to make sure that everyone is doing the job properly. And sometimes there's a lot of effort about arguing with dev about whether or not a vulnerability is exploitable. And, and to me, I, I've seen many, so too many situations where there, more, there was more time spent arguing on whether or not we should fix the vulnerabilities than the time it would take to actually correct it. So you need to think about how, how you will manage 
uh, your, your vulnerabilities. And one thing among others that uh, uh, over the year I, I found developers, uh, uh, developers found, found most frustrating for them is knowing that they've been working on a fix for a vulnerability which another team did also. So they could not benefit from the other team and they, oh, we, we spent effort for, for nothing. We, we, and they did it, why could we do, don't be using what you're doing? This is simply because the teams are, uh, as, they, they sh as they do, they, they use to have work on their code, work on their components, they use to implement on their own the, the, the security activities in the product line and they used to only see their vulnerability so they don't necessarily know what's going on. And even more with the, the shift left mindset, so the team needs to, to work fast, correct the vulnerabilities. They, they don't have time to look around in the company to say whether or not uh, the, the challenge they are facing uh, as well already being addressed by another team. So how to avoid that? Mm. To me, it's, it's, it's to have a mean to share uh, knowledge about the vulnerabilities uh, betw uh, between teams. So not only the development team should be aware on their vulnerabilities they are facing with their code, they should be aware of the vulnerability the, the other development team are facing. Uh, how to achieve that? Uh, there's, there's different approaches that, that, could be, uh, that could be put forward to, to do it. Uh, some of you with an AppSec, uh, security, uh, AppSec Champion program uh, might have think of having the AppSec Champion meet on a regular basis to share experiences and challenges the, the, the encountered. Uh, yet this has limitation because uh, you don't want to have to uh, meeting too often because that sec, uh, the, the, the champion um, will always be in meeting and you don't want to have the, the meeting spent uh, over too much time because uh, the, the, you want interact uh, you won't, they won't interact on a regular uh, two, uh, to create friend basis. Um, so uh, what you could, could you, do, you do on top of that? To me, one thing is to have a, a kind of an internal, internal vulnerability database, which will, could act for you as a, an internal CV database for, for your product and, and your, your solution. And, and with that, you can share the, the, the knowledge about vulnerabilities. And uh, having a proper uh, database, you can reduce, uh, you can more enable um, the, the, the handling of, uh, of vulnerabilities in particular in, in shared components. So the standard way teams do if they don't have access to such, uh, to such database is when they, whenever they include a third party component, uh, uh, a shared component in their solution on, on in their uh, web application, they have to redo all the scans. So you, if you have 10 teams using the same component, the 10 team will scan the same shared components and this, that's a lot of waste of, that's a lot of waste of resources and the scanning time and you, and you end up being, a, uh, you end up handling duplicates of reliability. So you have to share that information among the teams. Uh, it's, it's not because you share information about vulnerabilities that every team should access, uh, every vulnerability should be shared among all teams, but you, you, at least for, for share component and component that, that you have tagged more uh, iron or source for those that are familiar with, with the term, uh, the, 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 the source which is public to everyone in, in, the, in the, the company. You, you need uh, to to share it. Um, so now the developer are RIP because um, because they know we, what each other are doing. They are not 
uh, they don't have the impression that they are uh, uh, redoing, uh, redoing what one other team uh, already fixed and you have less duplicate in RT2 and Bill. Uh, still, uh, you, they can still demonstrate uh, frustration because uh, you ask them to manage false positive, you manage, you ask them to manage, to, uh, you manage exception, and they say that the tooling are uh, flag, uh, the tool flags vernities they have fixed, and they don't understand why. Uh, they say the tool doesn't, doesn't provide the right recommendation in their context. So they have, to, uh, again, too many things to handle on their, and their, on their side. Uh, sure, the tool, uh, the Vimera team tools that, that we just discussed about will help those teams to, to share knowledge and have uh, and improve the, the Vimera team management and, and the management of false positive. But still, there, there's there are work to do because uh, uh, how can we make sure that the, 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 the fixes they, they do are understood by the tools? How can we make sure that, uh, that the recommendation they get from the tool fit to, fit to their context? So uh, yeah, it is still frustrating. Um, so one thing we want to, to, want to go, it's kind of going beyond the variety and, and be, able, uh, be able to, to manage that frustration from, from the developers uh, by, uh, by having automated triage rules and having a shared fix uh, recipe. So, uh, and, and automated ways to handle false positive that you know in your context that those are uh, th those findings do, do not apply, and even if a, a vendor uh, says it, my tool is wonderful, it, it won't provide, it won't, uh, it won't report false positive. No, the, the, it, it will happen. Tools will always happen, uh, produce false positive. So we, you need to be able to uh, to enable them to to have those those cases, those most cases about. Uh, uh, approve exception, approve false positive to be handled right away and, and then don't have to, to bother about them. And you, for, and, and you have to share knowledge uh, about your, your, your fix. Uh, so, um, so, yeah. By, and by sharing that knowledge, by the, the, the having those triage automatic, you can reduce really the, the amount of work required from, from your developers and, and AppSec champion to, to fix things. And, and on the content part, your, your AppSec uh, will not, uh, will have a lot of, uh, AppSec specialists will have more, more time to, to work on other topic than just uh, supporting uh, developers on, on, on specific question about how to handle the, that, uh, that, that exception, for instance. So th this comes with our, uh, our, our, our first dependencies is to share grant knowledge among, among uh, all, all your team. And doing that, you'll be more efficient at, at handling and uh, addressing the vulnerabilities. And if you do have tools, uh, I invite you to ask your, your vendor whether or not they, they offer capabilities to share knowledge about, about, their, uh, about, your, about your custom uh, fixes. And uh, for me, the, 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 the vendor I has never answered my question on how to share, how they can their tool uh, share uh, knowledge about, uh, internal knowledge about how uh, vulnerabilities are address in, 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 your, in your specific context. And with that, uh, with that sharing of knowledge, you, you will be starting to be more efficient at handling vulnerabilities. Uh, so now, uh, now developers are, are happy about uh, the vulnerability management. You, they have the right information, the right tools, and the right processes to, to their, do their work faster. 
but still it doesn't mean that you, you have, uh, everyone is, is satisfied within the organization because uh, you, you, there's the scrum masters, there's the product owner, then the project manager that come here, uh, that come and say, no, I found it that developers spent too much time on security and too much time uh, on the, the tools configuration, too much time on handling, handling all those vulnerabilities, too much time on patch management. So they are not necessarily happy as uh, either. So you, you need to, to work with them to, to also to, to make that them happy. So you, you need to have a discussion with, uh, with the, all the, 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 the people that uh, planning the backlog and priorities, doing bug prioritization to, uh, to make sure that the, the security uh, and the vulnerability handling is performed properly. So for, from a backlog planning perspective, we, when one vulnerability comes, one defect in the, the, in the backlog, it, it's not because there's one vulnerability that's necessarily one defect and depending on what kind of vulnerability, it's not the same logic that, that, that would be applied. So and there's a plenty of w things to, uh, to consider when you're, when you're doing that. Um, also on the bug prioritization, the prioritization, it's w what you do if you have uh, 100 critical vulnerabilities, it, you cannot address them. So you, you need to, uh, to think about it and, and uh, find a way to, uh, to simplify things and not to come with overtried with a call where you need a lot of steps to try your vulnerability to prioritize them. And because each time you, 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 you introduce a new step, there's delay and you, you, you can get away from the, the shift left mindset if you, you already, where you have to, to fix uh, the vulnerabilities uh, quickly. And also you have the, the time resol to resolution to think about. So uh, with all the vulnerability management program, you need to, uh, you define time to resolution uh, objective and w what happens when, when some uh, limits is reached or is about to be reached. So you have to have th all those discussion with your scrum master, project manager or product owner, whatever roles you have. Um, in the organization which manage the, the, the developer backlog. Um, so this brings us to the, our second dependency is to be able to, to address vulnerability uh, efficiently. Uh, you, you need to, to share um, backlog, uh, backlog management strategies. And if you don't do this, uh, then um, Scrum Masters, Project, product owner will tend to always prioritize feature and they do. The, it's their business to, to prioritize feature on over security, but uh, having those, uh, all those processes and how those prioritization already set in place, uh, you can manage to, to, to put security forward in, in their work. Um, so, We've seen that we need shared common practices among developers. We need to, to make sure that they are working on the same matter. Uh, and we've seen also that there's, this is a lot of stuff, stuff to consider uh, to be efficient about vulnerability and link. Um, so what, what, uh, what could be we do, do to, to make sure that, that things are, are performed from a, uh, uh, while organizing work for developers and answer, ensuring that uh, the vulnerability management is performed uh, correctly. Uh, because without proper enablement of, of your team, you will have, again, the back and forth uh, between the development team and the AppSec and say, so the, the, the the, the, the developers uh, they say they, they have too much work to do and they won't, don't want to spend time on, on, on security. And even, even good developers or 
uh, or developers which are security aware, if they don't have the right memes over the time, they just they will just time to put uh, security away and and have to uh, and focus on on, on on feature rather than security. And on the present part, you have your ASIC uh, specialist, which will have a hard time to follow up with uh, w with what development team are doing. So, uh, and this is quite understandable because there we've seen that there's a lot of stuff to do, and there are all, all practices that are transversal. It's not dedicated to one team, and when and usually one practices of transversal like in one organization, it's kind of getting harder to to have them maintain over time. So, so you, and also uh, those those practices, the, the the things we we saw is the kind of pilot side of, of the secure SDLC. So that's not easy to to enable, necessarily easy to enable because there's no one, there's not, uh, it's not. Uh, it's not only one team business, and it it falls off outside of what normal processes are in in, in your organization. Um, and for, from from a, an organization, when they try to uh, to organize the security, they they've come with with that target, uh, and even though that the few organization have enough uh, resources to to do it, but uh, even though just few organizations have enough resources to, to implement all this, if you do have all the, the, the required resources, it's not because you have that, that you're necessarily be able to support uh, both the AppSec and the development team uh, in the right matter. Uh, because uh, as we see, there, there's a lot of, of stuff that needs to, to be done. And there's something that the, the organization tend to have. It's they, they call it the the, Def, the DevSecOps uh, guys, or but the, the role of, of those uh, people or employees more dedicated to uh, to the CI/CD itself and the, the tooling itself. But as we saw, it's not only about the tooling and the secret tooling we, we integrated in your your pipeline. So organization have to think about uh, and what I call the AppSec up team. It, it's a team that will support your, your, uh, your AppSec operation within your pipeline and your, within your, your shift lift uh, journey. And it, I, I, I might compare that to, to a mix of, of orange, purple, <laughs> and, and green team if you, you um, recall the last slide. Uh, because you, you need to uh, to understand the gaps in the knowledge of the developers and come up with solution and, and practices that 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 they will uh, that will they will use to to be more efficient uh, at their work. So uh, th this, that's uh, that's kind of the the basic mindset of, of, su of such a thing. And you have to make sure that you enable both the um, the, def the AppSec team and the development team. <laughs> so, um, so if you do have that 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 kind of, of team within your organization, uh, does it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be a dedicated a team because y we know every organization has limit and uh, uh, resources limit. So, but if so <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but if it's not a dedicated team, team uh, when you do assign people to uh, to work on, on the AppSec operation, uh, you will need to plan correctly their task 
and budget their time uh, because without that it's it, because once again they would not if if developer are working on def, uh, on tooling to help with uh, with that integration they won't be delivering feature and if they do not deliver feature they don't uh, they, I would say they don't benefit the business but it's not directly uh, it's not directly the case but it, it will be viewed as as such so you have to really really uh, plan those uh, those tasks and, and ensure that that you have a team working together to to make things happen um, so just a quick wrap up uh, about uh, uh, of what we see uh, we saw during today's uh, presentation so uh, we see that uh, identifying vulnerabilities is n is n is the easy part in, in your shift led journey uh, there's many challenges that we we face uh, about uh, enabling shift left in appsec and you, you can train developers you can deploy a security champion you can deploy security stories uh, those are all good things to do but there's more much more you can do and when teams start when, when organization wants to to integrate security activities in the pipeline they usually think of that that goal uh, that goal for uh, DevSecOps and when I see it and when I, I speak with organization uh, one thing uh, I ask them is okay you want to have DevSecOps but what's your DevOps maturity what's your development maturity and 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 they don't understand usually they don't understand why you ask them that but if you have to build on top of, of devops and build on top of development you, you need to ensure that they have the right uh, the right maturity and in addition you have to think ab outside of the the standard scope of ssdlc because security as we see is not only only about deploying security activities in each of the single phases uh, of the development cycle is to to be able to to work with other team and, and understand the processes and be able to integrate security in their processes it's about uh, being there when they, they, they choose a new development technology and we saw it uh, lately at expo we, we were not there fast enough to pick up that development team wanted to start working with rust and therefore our tools were not, at the, not, were not uh, adapted and were not uh, covering rust so and, and we had to to paddle and to, to pick it up afterward and it was more difficult to do it and, and you have to be there when they design their 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 release practices and their uh, the uh, the the patch management and how they plan the organ when they organize the work between teams because we saw that many challenges that we we saw in the presentation came, came from the the team the best effort team were which were not very dedicated to uh, to main to the, the maintenance of, of some components so you you have to be there in every discussion on, on how to organize work the for works in your organization um so uh for 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 that uh when you consider sh uh, doing sh uh, shift left in your appsec you need to think about prerequis prerequisites what what could be done before even before starting uh doing implementing security activities in, in your ci cd to reduce the amount of effort that you will be required to uh, to detect and act vulnerabilities you need to 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 have in mind also how I'll be efficient to uh, to manage those vulnerabilities I found because of the of the shift left mindset where you want to be quick at addressing not only at identifying vulnerabilities but you want to be quick at addressing those vulnerabilities so you need to have um, capabilities there to to be efficient a and you need to to think about how you want will support 
both the prerequisite and, and the dependencies and, and have, uh, have the thing, so, so the thing runs smoothly on the long run. So with that, uh, thank you, and uh, I hope you, you enjoyed the presentation.